Thank you, Mahanai. Well, love from my beloved. She's not here again today. She's again working at Roger Williams Hospital. So if the message stinks, it's because I'm only half here, and my better half is not. So if the message is subpar, or only half as good, then nor as it normally is, you know why. So love from Susie. I got one on in. So love from Susie. The joy of my life, the love of my life, Amen. my walking, talking, living, breathing, Holy Spirit. Amen. And all the women went, you got that right. <laughs> and all the men said, say what? <laughs> now you may think that that's kind of odd, but it is biblical. Yes, it is. Thank you, Pastor. Hallelujah. It takes a pastor to recognize it. You know, in the New Testament, it speaks about how the man is the Messiah of the house. Husbands, love your wives right. like Messiah loves. Yeah. Lay down his life right. for his community, his congregation, his church. Husbands, love your wives in that way. So why do I say that the wife is like Ruach? Ruach. Spirit, well. When Yeshua said that the Ruach, the Spirit, is coming, what do we call him? Helper. Comforter. First time we see the promise of Eve to Adam, what was she called? The Helper. Do you see the connection between the wife and the Holy Spirit? I tell you that it's not a coincidence. When he said, when Yeshua said, I'm going to bring the helper, what are you saying? It's not good for man to be alone. Mm -hmm. It's the same spirit in which God blessed Adam with Eve. Humans can't do it by themselves. We can't do it alone. And apparently, men are worse than women at it. Because we need like a wife. But I'll tell you something. It's not as really about just having a wife. Because if you are single or if you're a woman, God wants you to have the Holy Spirit as a helper. Because when he said that man shall not be alone, it's not good for man to be alone. In spirit, he's saying it's not good for all of us, all of us, to walk this walk, to walk this journey of life without the helper. And the helper comes. our faith in God mm -hmm. through the atoning work of his son. And when we put our faith in God through the atoning work of his son and realize God I can keep the Torah I can keep the law as much as I can but as much as, as I do it very well I'm still not there. When we put our faith in the one who kept it perfectly and continues to keep it perfectly. God's like, I can entrust the Holy Spirit to that one. So when we believe in God through his son, God gives us the helper to help us. <laughs> because we need help. We need a lot of help. Got that right. For real. <laughs> I have to say that we're speaking so much today, and I love it when the scriptures that are read, which I did not pick, coincide with words that are said and songs that are sung, and there is this theme of God's gifts. 
all throughout. I don't know if you caught that. I did. But it came forth many times. And my marriage is God's greatest gift to me. Susie is God's greatest gift to me. Yeah. I am not the man that I was. When I got a double whammy of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit. <laughs> it's a double whammy. Now, Susie and I, some of you know, we also minister in music. Susie's a musician and a singer and a songwriter. And we've been very, very blessed over the past, actually, couple of decades now to be able to travel to Messianic synagogues really around the world and minister in music through Sue's songs. And very often when we're at a congregation and we're giving a testimony, especially in a congregation that is not yet familiar with us, uh, Susie's very quick to tell people what a jerk I used to be. <laughs> and she'd be right. I was actually, when Susie and I first met, I was, I was quite the atheist. And as Susie was very quick to point out, when we're in front of people I don't know, a jerky atheist, a proud atheist. And when we started to get more serious, because we needed help. Because what's a girl who identifies as a Christian dating a Jewish atheist for? I don't know. But we were. And at some point, she actually sought some counsel. So she, she sought out a, a group, you may have heard of them, called Jews for Jesus. Amen. Jews for Jesus. Now, she called them up, and she asked for advice. She said, I'm dating this guy, he's Jewish. He's not a believer. He doesn't even believe in God. Forget about believing in Jesus, he doesn't even believe in God. What do I do? Can you give me some advice? And Jews for Jesus' answer to her was, run! <laughs> Break up with the guy! Don't be unequally yoked. But she responded to them, apparently, she told me this later, I see something in there. I see something. Praise God. Now, what she saw in the atheist jerk, who is me, was me. Was me. I don't know. I don't know what she saw. But, you know. Things happened. Mm -hmm. I accepted the Lord. Amen. And then I got that double dose of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs> and I really just say that in jest because those who are single or female, you got just as much Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. But then I started to change. <clears throat> and this is where the Holy Spirit comes in. Because he doesn't leave you where he finds you. Right. Come on. Hallelujah. He doesn't leave you where he finds you. Because the Holy Spirit says, I see something in that one. Come on. Take it. The Holy Spirit says, I <laughs> see something in that one. And just like a good wife does, she extracts it <laughs> over a long time, Amen. mainly because of the stubbornness of the man. Amen. Please know when I'm talking, when I say man, I'm speaking about all of us. And when I say the woman, I'm speaking Holy Spirit. Amen. Please understand, the Holy Spirit sees something that you don't, that your friends don't, that your 
Mom, don't. Or maybe mom. <laughs> you know, not even mom. <laughs> Dad, don't. Grandma, grandpa, they don't see. Holy Spirit, see something. And if we submit to the process, Ruach HaKodesh will extract wine out of you. And he is faithful to do it. If we submit to the process. I was very blessed this past week. I got to counsel a very young couple who are engaged to be married. They contacted me as a Messianic rabbi to officiate their wedding, which I will do in May. It's a, it's a man and the wife-to-be is a Jewish believer. And he's Christian. And they just, she wanted to honor her Jewish heritage, so she contacted a Messianic rabbi, pretty much the first one that she could find. She lives in Rhode Island. They live in Rhode Island. To officiate the wedding. And I got to meet them at Starbucks. That was my idea. Because I knew they paid for it. <laughs> and... <laughs> you're lucky you're amongst friends, girls. I heard that. <laughs> I knew it was Pastor Rob. I knew it was Pastor Rob. Okay. There you go. Okay. Um, all right. Let's be nice. Good times. So I was with them at Starbucks, and she asked me, Can you give us marital advice? Like, what can we expect? walking into this thing called marriage. And I can only speak from my own experience that very often in a, in a wedding, especially as people, maybe the, the best man or the maid of honor is giving a little speech or somebody's giving them some blessing, they'll say, look, two puzzle pieces that just fit so perfectly together. And now the puzzle pieces will be together. I said, no, nah, <laughs> that's not how it works. You are puzzle pieces that don't fit together. And if you have two pieces that don't fit together, they will clash. They will hit against each other trying to fit. That's what marriage is. But if you submit at your heart is soft and pliable and malleable and humble and not hard. You will find that your peace will start to change shape. Amen. And he will find that his peace starts to change shape. And you came in looking like this. But if you submit to the process, Glory. you start to change. Yes. And all of a sudden, two pieces that didn't connect, all of a sudden you'll find goes click. And that is the work of the Holy Spirit. Don't stay the same. It's like the little kids game when you have the, you know, the kids where they got to take a shape and find the shape in the container, you know, you to take a square and you're going to put it into the square hole. And you're going to take the circle and you're going to put it into the circle hole, the triangle. And you put it into the triangle hole. Not just marriage, but life. Transforming into who God wants you to be. It's sometimes like we're a circle trying to get into that triangle. And we're just beating it, and beating it, and beating it, and we just don't fit. But if we submit to the process, you change. And the other partner changes. And all of a sudden, you're some crazy, weird amalgamation of a circle and a triangle that you can't even define because the shape is perfectly unique to you. And you fit. 
And that is the work of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. You know, when Peter was asked the question of Yeshua, who do you say that I am? He said in response, Peter said in response, Atahu Hamashiach, there's that word again, Pastor. <laughs> ben Elohim Chaim, you are the Messiah, the Mashiach, son of the living God. He recognized who Yeshua was, identified him properly. And Yeshua said, well done, that didn't come to you through flesh and blood. Now I will change your name from Simon to Peter to Rock. In other words, what do we learn from that? You recognize who he is, he tell you who you are. Now Peter then started to try to become the rock on his own. The verse right after that, Yeshua said he has got to go to Jerusalem and he's going to be handed over and put to death. And Peter, all of a sudden, I think he thought that because he was now the rock that he had to become like Rocky. <laughs> Never! <laughs> See, he, had to, he figured he had to do it himself. See, that's what we do. Right. That's the circle banging into the triangle hole. We try to become this thing in the flesh, and we just hurt ourselves, and we get a bruise on our head. But when we submit to the Holy Spirit, He's got a you in mind that you don't even know. You can't identify it. He might give you a prophecy, but you're still not going to figure it out. Peter never could have figured out that the fulfillment of him being called the rock and the foundation of his congregation is after Yeshua was raised, he said, feed my lambs. It's got nothing to do with his bravado and his machismo. <laughs> or how we can take a sword and cut off the ear of a priest's servant or all these big bold things, rocky things that he did. It got nothing to do with that. In our Torah portion, Joseph was given a, a vision of what he's going to be. I got to die a vision. I see these sheaves and I'm mine's all straight. No <laughs> wonder his brothers hated his guts. <laughs> Sometimes if you get a dream, you just got to shut up. Don't go telling your brother his family's hard enough. And then the sun and the moon and the 11 stars is bringing mom and dad into this thing now. Bad idea. I guarantee that young Joseph, when he, when he sh sh shared those dreams with his family, he thought he was going to be king over them. He had no idea how this thing was going to play out. God, the Holy Spirit, knows what he's going to do through you. Mm -hmm. And it takes a breaking and a, and a morphing into what he has. And we just have to submit to it. That's the work of the helper. I am so grateful that I am not the guy I was when the Holy Spirit found me. When I accepted Yeshua of those 20 some odd years ago. I am not the same person. And this is not a message for the young or the old. It's a message for all of us. That he's not done transforming you. Do you know so much of the New Testament is about transformation? It's about taking where you are today and bringing you somewhere else yes. to a greater reality of who you are. It says in one place that the image of his son Transformed. Don't be conformed. Be transformed. So much transformation. 
Submit. Submit to it. Don't fight it. And be transformed. The army cannot hold on to the be all you can be slogan. That's for you through the Holy Spirit. It's through the Ruach. To be all you can be. Not be all that he can be or she can be. I think one of the challenges of people finding all they can be. I think there's a lot of challenges to it. I think we define all we can be by how much other people are. But God doesn't want you to do that at all. He doesn't want you to do that at all. Let me tell you something. There's a parable of talents. Talents. Where the owner of the property gave talents. And before we put our English mindset on it, the talents was just a sum of money. A large sum of money. And he gave it to servants. He said, you tend to it while I go away. Some he gave five. Some he gave two. Some he gave one. It says, according to their ability. Don't worry about it. If you feel that this other guy got five and you got one, the question is, what are you going to do with it? That's, right. That's the question. What are you going to do with it? What are you going to do with it? What are the talents that God gave you? What are you saying, what are you going to do with it? Your family, what are you going to do with it? That's a talent. Your marriage, what are you going to do with it? Husbands, wives, that's a talent. The Holy Spirit is saying, that's a talent. That's five, that's two, that's one. What are you going to do with it? Are you going to bury it in a hole and have it come to nothing? Imagine the Lord giving it to you. All good gifts, right? Come from above. That's the talents. He gives it. Imagine that. He gives it and goes away, ready to come back and see what you did with it. What's my talent? Oh, I can sing. No, that's putting your English mindset to it. Your marriage is your talent. Your family is your talent. Your parenting is your talent. We sang, you're the God of this city. Everybody here is a mayor. Yeah! (laughs) (laughs) Some in a little sense. (laughs) You are the mayor of the city that God gave you. What are you going to do with it? Think about it. Think about what your talent is, what your city is. And just envision the owner, the one who really owns it, not you, giving it to you and going away, saying, I'm coming back to see what you did. My marriage is a talent. Mishkan is a talent for me. But even then, you can get twisted in your head trying to compare it. I'm Rabbi Brian. I'm not Stephen Furtick. Or the guy in Lakeland Church in Texas or whoever. Or Pastor Dave from across the street at Praise Tabernacle. I can't compare. I just need to be faithful with the talent that he gave me. Uh And before the Lord, and I charge you to do it before the Lord... Are you faithful with what he gave you? That's the question. Whatever it is, I don't care if you just own a little thing. Are you faithful with it? That's the question we need to be asking. Not compared to other people. Oh, that person over the family is so functional. (laughs) Not like mine. (laughs) Don't compare to other families. Don't compare to other people in their jobs. Right. Don't think their social media accounts really <laughs> portray their real life. Mm-hmm. Just say, God gave me this to be faithful with. Am I being faithful 
with it before him. And he will come back and see what you do with it. Don't define what that expansion means, turning the two talents into four or the five into ten. Be faithful with it. Bring it before God. And say, you, this is my talent. This is it. It's not the singing or the drum playing. Or the drawing. Put those away. Your, your job, whatever it is, I'm going to let you decide. But I want you to think of it that way. What did you do with it? Oh, here's another talent that I have. My addictions. My phobias. right words to bring this forth. Because if you're going to get anything out of this, I want you to get this. Don't look at these things that you consider your failures or your flaws as that. You know, sometimes we just grow up and we have things that we have to struggle with. We have, we have fears. We have anxiety. Why don't you look at it? Not as just as like a demon, something you just need to get rid of. Look at it as like God entrusted this with me. Father, I just pray that this comes across right. Look at your challenges, your, your fears, your phobias, your addictions. It's like God entrusted me with this and left me with it. What am I going to do with it when he comes back? Do you understand what I'm saying? What am I going to do with it? He did it with me. I can speak from just a personal perspective. I grew up and I've shared it here before. I have like this social phobia that I deal with. Where I just feel anxious when I'm in, in the presence of people. A social phobia. And God's like, okay, you got it. What are you going to do with it? What are you going to do with it? Are you going to bury it in the sand like the guy with the one talent and do nothing and pretend it's not there? Or are you going to say, okay, I got this thing. But I'm going to be victorious over it. All right, I inherited some addictive behaviors in my family line. Instead of burying it like the guy with the one talent did nothing with it, how about we say, okay, God entrusted me with this to, to have victory over it? Do you understand what I'm saying? It changes. Turn your trials into talents. And when you turn your trials into talents, then you have an assignment with it. Yes. What are you going to do with it? All right, I have major issues with self-worth. I think I'm, oh, this is now I'm talking in generalities, okay? So I'll let it hit where it hits. I feel like I'm ugly. I feel like I'm unworthy. I feel like I'm unlovable. Okay, twist that. It's so, okay, I acknowledge it. That's like step one in the 12 step thing, right? I acknowledge it. <laughs> yes. Now what are you gonna do with it? If the king, the owner is gonna come back to the land and say, okay, you with the feelings of self-worthlessness, what'd you do with that? Maybe that will change your perspective on how you address it in yourself. I pray that we submit to the work of the Holy Spirit to bring you to that new man and that new woman that he's seen, that he's committed to bringing and extracting out of you
He doesn't leave you where he finds you. And he's not going to leave you where you are now. You're being transformed glory to glory. Just be humble and recognize your brokenness. recognize that you have the Holy Spirit not because of anything that you've done but because of what he did for you and be patient with yourself God's timing reigns over all of these things I've shared here before I was first married and prior, I used to go to like, any kids here? Go to like strip joints with my friends and I accepted the Lord and I still kept going. But then there was one time, probably two years after I accepted the Lord, I was in there with my friend and I felt like I wanted to vomit. The whole mindset, the whole situation changed for me. And I just had to flee from that place. And it never went back. Why didn't it happen in the beginning? Why didn't it happen two years prior? Why didn't it happen six months prior? Why didn't it happen one day prior? God's timing reigns through this transition, transformation process. Be patient. God is faithful to transform you into the image of his son. Don't stop. Don't stop. Don't stop believing. Don't stop believing that he's not done. However old you are, or young you are. I know we have a very young congregation here. This is totally the under 30 crowd, I can see it. <laughs> Don't stop believing. He is faithful to complete the work that he started. Your homework is to look at your lives, look at the aspects of your lives, the challenging, the good and the bad, as you call it, as talents, given to you to do something. Pray about that. Think about it from both angles. And bring it before the Lord. And say, I'm going to be faithful with this. I'm going to be faithful with this. I've experienced loss in my life. Talented. 